everybody, welcome back to the shop. Thanks for being here. Today we're gonna finish our elk ivory inlay project on our little knife handle, and that'll be awesome. And also this is uh, gonna be, well, it's either gonna be the last video of 2019 or the very first video of 2020. Being around the end of the year and around the first of the next year, I had it deep inside my heart to talk a little bit about kind of what happened in the last year. And I don't really know, it kind of went by really fast, but um, maybe I'll try to throw some of that in there as well. But anyway, let's get to work on this. In the last video, we had the elk ivory in place and lightly attached with some super glue, and that worked quite well actually. And so I went ahead and filled the backside up with epoxy as I normally do, and it's all cured up and ready to sand off, grind off flush. This is what it looks like, all cleaned up, flushed down. I'm gonna go ahead and tape off the ivory so that it doesn't uh, get anything on it that we don't want. So while the epoxy is setting up on that knife enough to work on it a little bit more, um, I'm gonna share a couple things with you. Uh, so one thing is, about a month ago, I put up a, a new feature on the website, firecreekforge.com, and that is you can go there and sign up to be on a list to be notified of the next knife that I have available for sale that is a a special build, like a one-off, that kind of thing. So you can purchase knives through my website and Etsy shops and that kind of thing, some of the different models that I make. But when it comes to some of the more special pieces, a lot of which are gonna be Damascus, just, you know, kind of one-off pieces that are kind of special, I'm, I'm building an email list for people who want to be, uh, be able to have first dibs at that. So the way that's gonna work is you get on the list and the next knife I have, I will email everybody on the list and uh, it's first come first serve. I, I feel like I should have done this a long time ago, but I, I didn't really think of it, so um, better late than never. But talking about the last year, 2019, it's been a good year. It's, it's been a good year. We've actually kind of seen more uh, sort of organic, if you will, sales. I guess what I mean by that is more sales that have originated with our uh, marketing efforts, which has largely just been talking to people face to face at the farmer's market and things like that, and then our own website and so forth. So in, in long term, I want to be, I want to move away from third party online platforms. So, you know, so I'm, we're independent of things like Etsy and that kind of thing. So that's the direction it's been moving, which is great. So I just want to say thank you to everybody who has purchased the knife this last year and helped uh, make it a success for us. Really appreciate that. And everybody else who's uh, supported us in various ways. So I really, we appreciate that. Go ahead and get on that list if you're interested. Really, I mean, I'll talk about kind of the reason why a little bit. This has been my sole income for a little over two years, yeah, over two years now. And then, we, you know, I've been doing this as a job for over four years. And I've done a few things on the side for the first uh, couple of years. I've made a lot of $200 knives, a lot of $250 knives. But what I've found is that it's very difficult to make enough $200 knives in a month to comfortably, you know, pay the bills and save some money, that kind of thing, you know. It can be done, but that's not what I want for my family, for our business a year from now, if possible, and, you know, five years from now. So one of the things about being self-employed or in any business is that you always have to be looking where you're trying to get to. Uh, there's never a time where you're just gonna, you know, okay, we're here, and that's, you know. I remember when I felt like if I could just sell enough knives, pay the bills, you know, and we've been blessed to do that. And now I'm looking at, okay, so what can what can work, work, work better for my family and all the responsibilities that I have, you know, how can we continue to grow? And so that's that's the direction we're heading. So, you wanna get down? That's Tank. That's Tank the Bulldog. French Bulldog, yes, here's a good boy, yeah. Right, you want to get down? Okay. Now, one of the other things that we're trying to do, as you probably have figured out if you're watching the channel for any length of time, is I'm trying to build up the YouTube channel. I built my first knife 20 years ago and did it for a hobby off and on for a long time. And then for, well, 
four and a half years ago or something like that, we started selling knives and so it really kind of ramped up from there. But I've made a lot of knives and I still have a lot to learn. And that's one thing about this is that you're always learning something. So, you know, I'm not claiming to be an expert on much, but uh, I do feel like I have a few things I can pass on to people who are looking to get into the craft in general and just, you know, for entertainment's sake, if nothing else. And so I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate you guys being here and uh, taking time out of your day to watch what we got going on. It, it means a lot. And that's that's kind of part of what I'm trying to do going forward with Fire Creek Forge, with the business. All right, so the epoxy is set up on this enough to where I can start gently shaping the handle. All right, normally I would do a lot more shaping on the grinder, but obviously probably the most important thing at this point is to not ruin the ivory. And so I'm going to do the rest of the shaping by hand so that I can very carefully work around the, the ivory. So along the lines of what I was talking about with where we're trying to take this whole thing, this business. One aspect of that is the different types of venues. So we started selling online on Etsy and that, that was a good venue for a couple years and they made a lot of changes and instituted a lot bigger fees and different things like that and it, it's really not what it used to be in my opinion. I was talking to a friend uh, a while back who thinks that the online purchasing fad, well I guess it's more than a fad, it's been around for a while, but the, the online purchasing culture is, is on its way out to some degree. That's what he was. He, he feels like that people are, are tired of having zero connection with the person they're buying the product from. Not to mention the fact that so much of the products that you can buy or that we buy online are, you know, not even made in the same country, and they're completely, you know, they have no soul, right? You know, so not only are the products just generic and, and, and sort of lifeless, uh, the transaction is completely generic and lifeless. And so I think there are people that are moving away from that. There are people that are coming to the farmers markets or the craft fairs or you know the brick and mortar stores because they want to hold the item the product in their hand they want to talk to the at least the person who's selling it and how much better the if you know they can talk to the person that actually made it you know uh, so I, I think there's some there's some truth to that, but I would really love to know uh, what you guys think. Leave a comment and, and tell me what your thoughts are on that. Just you know, as as a customer or as a maker, either one. Staying warm enough through a tank. Look like it. All right guys, that's the end of our project. The elk ivory inlay and the knife handle. I'll show you some pictures here in just a second. But I just wanna say real quick, hope you have a good year in 2020. I appreciate you guys supporting the channel. Thanks for subscribing, hitting the notifications button. As always, thanks for watching and have a great day.